As part of the Trump administration's ramping up of prosecution and anti-immigration enforcement push, on January 18th, four No More Deaths activists were found guilty of different charges. They were detained for being on Cabeza Prieta, a protected 860-acre refuge without a permit, and for trying to leave water for immigrants crossing the desert. This is a U.S. federal court of law where four activists from the organization No More Deaths were prosecuted and found guilty of a number of different charges. The group's driver, Natalie Hoffman, was declared guilty of operating a vehicle in the wilderness area, entering federal land without a permit and abandonment of property, while Ona Holcomb, Madeline Hus, and Zachila Orzoko McCormick were found guilty of two of those charges. The defendants are still awaiting sentencing and face a maximum penalty of six months in prison and a $250 fine each. Catherine Gaffney is an activist for No More Deaths, which is a multi-faith coalition group and a ministry of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Tucson. She came as a volunteer and saw so much death and suffering that she moved to Tucson in 2011 to be a permanent volunteer for the organization. The prosecutions call into question both the right to receive humanitarian aid, which everyone has a right to, regardless of your documentation status, Everyone has a right to medical care, to food and water. It doesn't matter if um, you're an immigrant or not. Uh, and it um, is an attack on the right to give humanitarian aid, which is not only a human right, but is a faith. It's a principle of faith for um, people around the world that um, the Good Samaritan responds to someone in need. Activist Scott Warren, who is an Arizona University instructor, awaits trial for charges involving harboring undocumented immigrants, which is considered a felony. His detention happened just hours after the release of videos of Border Patrol destroying water jugs. There is a pattern of, of targeting no more deaths. Um, these latest prosecutions really kicked off when we released our report documenting thousands of incidences of Border Patrol destruction of water in the desert. Um, so we believe there's a pattern of retaliation here. Dan Millis, a former No More Deaths volunteer, was also found guilty of littering in 2008. The ruling was overturned by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in 2010. Max and I and a couple of different volunteers with No More Deaths, we were approached by federal law enforcement officers. And they said, what are you doing here? And we said, well, we're leaving water for people in need. And they said, you can't leave water because that's littering. Now we said, littering, look, we're not littering, we're actually picking up garbage. If we find any garbage or trash on the ground, we pick it up and we put out fresh, clean bottles of sealed water and we keep track of it all. We write it down and we come back and check on it. And every time there's an empty, we put a new one out and take the empty and recycle it. No More Deaths began in 2004 as a coalition of community and faith groups trying to stop the deaths in the desert, which have been documented to be as high as 160 a year. In 2005, when Shanti and Daniel were accused, they fought felony charges for, again, I think it was a year and a half, two years. Those charges were finally dropped. Then I got prosecuted. My friend Walt Emrys Staten got prosecuted. Um, then Catherine Ferguson, who has since passed away. A third group of volunteers awaits their trial on February 26. Caitlin Deegan, charged with driving in the wilderness area, along with Zoe Anderson, Logan Hollersmith, and Rebecca Grossman Reichmer, all charged with entering the National Wildlife Refuge without a permit. It's simply not possible to carry the amount of water that you would need. Um, there are no natural water sources in that desert. There's uh, two or three wildlife stock tanks with pretty polluted water that uh, isn't very healthy to drink, often leads to diarrhea and GI problems. And on the day that um, the four volunteers were stopped by Fish and Wildlife, uh, it was 110 degrees. So walking in 110 degree heat for three to five days with no natural water, it's clear that that will lead to death if people aren't able to find water to keep going. Anybody who's been around the Sonoran Desert understands how deadly it is. Not only does it have extreme weather in the day and night, it also has a great number of cactuses that can make your life very difficult. You can get lost, you can fall into a ditch, hurt yourself and be left to die. But the main danger is the heat. Its chief assassin is a severe heat stroke. She was only 14 years old when she died and her name was Yosemite. She had been crossing from El Salvador trying to reunite with her mother in LA. 
And so she'd already traveled through Central America, through all of Mexico, and had come to the point in her journey where uh, she was walking across the border with her little brother, who was, I guess, 10 years old at the time. And they were being led by the coyote. And when she became sick, as they tried to walk into Arizona, walking you know, through the remote stretches of my home state, she became sick. She couldn't keep up with the group. She told her little brother to, to keep going and to reunite with, with their mother, which uh, he was able to do. But no one ever saw Yoseline alive again that we know of after that. And we've actually been victorious in the courts and defending our humanitarian aid uh, since 2005. So we're going to continue with that success. Not only human rights being violated, but people are being killed. Whether they're dying in our deserts, dying in detention, uh, dying after they've been deported and, and delivered back into the hands of, uh, of the gang members that they're trying to escape. It's just murder and it's wrong, just like slavery was wrong. What we saw this week was criminalization of being able to put out water in the West Desert in a corridor where hundreds of people have died and, and countless more have disappeared uh, in the last five years. So um, we're really concerned by the judge's ruling that uh, seems to prohibit being able to put out water in an area where people are dying of thirst. Um, we think that there should be respect to the preservation of life put ahead of um, targeting of human humanitarian aid by, by government. And what we've really seen in the West Desert is a clear pattern um, of targeting of no more deaths. Um, specifically, we saw them rewrite their permit in 2016 to forbid humanitarian aid um, on the Cabeza Prieta refuge. The policy of prevention through deterrence, which is the official border uh, policy of the United States, um, it was adopted in 1994 when NAFTA was enacted, and uh, the strategy is to make the crossing through the border so um, deadly that it will deter people from migrating. And we have seen that it has been very effective at making uh, the border crossing very deadly by closing down the ports of entry, closing down the urban areas where people used to cross through and forcing people into wilderness areas. It has not in any way deterred people who are fleeing for their lives from crossing through the desert. So um, we, one of No More Deaths core demands is for an end to prevention through deterrence. Um, it is the cause of the thousands of, more than 7,000 lives um, lost on the border. The very big render by the court seems to confirm what many have feared, that the Trump administration is ramping up the efforts to use the Arizona desert as a weapon, deterrence by death. For The Real News, this is Oscar Leon from Tucson, Arizona.